wrong number, 164. 164.
verses in all three verses. Two, three, zero. Three verses. <clears throat> this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then following along in a songbook, it'll be one of the printouts for the red folder, it'll be number 14, for those that use the folders, I think I got everybody their copy uh, this, uh, this evening, we're going to sing a shield, uh, normally what we do is we sing the first verse, and then uh, we finish the song, and then or the first verse, and then we go back and sing the whole song. <coughs> Despite how it looks on paper and how long the song is, it's technically all only one verse. Uh, so we're going to sing the song through uh, twice this evening. A shield about me. Uh, if you'll notice on the first verse, for those singing bass, uh, at the top of the uh, bass cleft on this song, uh, the bass is singing with the uh, tenor or can sing with one of the other parts. There are no uh, bass notes until we get to the 
Uh, we'll do the Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me, you're my glory, you're the lifter of my head, and we repeat that. And then we add the bass part in for the rest of the song uh, after that. <clears throat> a shield about me. Oh, oh, me.
Psalms 150, verses 1 through 6. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with string instruments and flute. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Everything that, everything that has breathed shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
to do our second of our uh, new songs. This will be number 15 in the uh, folder, Wonderful Merciful Savior. This song, it is two pages, three verses, so this time we don't have to sing the whole song, so do one verse. We'll sing, we'll do what we normally do, since this one has multiple verses. We'll sing verse one, Wonderful Merciful Savior. And then uh, we'll go back and sing all three verses uh, before we have the invitation. Oh, <coughs> oh, me. Kings chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21. As you're turning there, let me ask you a question. 
Have you ever had anything so valuable you wouldn't sell it for anything in the world? Is there any item you've ever owned that is just so valuable to you that if somebody was to offer you just some astronomical prize, that it is so important, it is so valuable, you would say it's not for sale. I'm sure that most of us have some kind of sentimental uh, item that we, we wouldn't let go of because of what it means to us. Maybe it's something passed down from our parents or grandparents. Maybe it's something from some friend. Maybe it's something we've had a long time, and so it just holds so much value. But if somebody came to you and said, "What about? Well, I'll give you three hundred dollars for it, four hundred, five hundred, six hundred. No, it's not for sale. Even the items we say are not for sale are probably for sale if the price gets high enough. Well, you know, that dish that Mama gave me, that's an important dish. But, you know, that million-dollar offer is quite a bit. I think I'll take the million dollars. There's probably a price at which we would finally sell that item that we say is not for sale. Here's a question for you. What would you sell yourself for? I'm not talking about in any immoral way. But would you sell out your principles? Is there something valuable enough to you that you're willing to compromise and sell out on your principles in order to attain it? Maybe there's some kind of friendship that is so important to you, say, you know what, I'll sell out on my principles to keep that friendship. Maybe there's some family relationship that is so valuable that you say, you know what, I'd sell myself, I'd sell out on my principles to keep that relationship. Well, in 1 Kings chapter 21 and in verse 28, we read of a king who did that. But there was no one like Ahab who sold himself to do evil or to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Ahab was a wicked king. We can go back in the first Kings chapter 16 when Ahab is introduced and is pointed out as if it had been a, a trivial thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, that he took as a wife, Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbel, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. He was already a wicked king. But then he sold himself to do evil. And if we're not careful, we may find ourselves selling ourselves to do evil just like Ahab did. Well, how do I know if I've sold myself to do evil? Well, here's a few things to note. Number one, if you view sin as a trivial matter, you've sold yourself to do evil. Again, Ahab's view in 1 Kings, as if it had been a trivial thing. Listen, serving, uh, serving the golden calves at Dan and Bethel was not a trivial thing. But Ahab's view was as if that was just some trivial, non-important matter. He was going to focus instead on what he wanted to focus on and do what he wanted to do. Here's a man that time and time again provoked the Lord because of his wickedness. And perhaps we, like Ahab, come to view sin as something trivial. We think it's not a big deal. Sometimes we say that. Well, that, that, that's no big deal. It's just a little white. Why? Or we may throw something else in there. And when we begin to look at it that way, and view sin as a trivial thing, we've sold ourselves to do evil. Number two, if you're influenced by the world, you've sold yourself to do evil. Here's a man that married a pagan woman, an idol worshiper. Somebody, by the way, God had forbidden them to marry. And she brought her worldly influence into the marriage. She impacted him. That same verse that says he sold himself to do evil says that she stirred him up. 
If we begin to realize that we're impacted by worldly influences, whether that be someone's mate, whether that be their friends and close companions, or some family member, we're allowing to impact us and pull us away. If we're letting a worldly person influence us and pull us away from God, we've sold ourselves to do evil. We've sold ourselves for the sake of that relationship. Number three, we've sold ourselves if we take on the religion of the world. That's what Ahab did. He brought in the religion of the nations around and serving the Baals and the Asherah. He took on idol worship. He took on their practices and the people of Israel became no different than the people of the nations around them. And the reason was they were influenced and impacted by a leader who so sold himself to do evil, he was going to do what the world was doing. And maybe today we look at society and we don't go quite as far as we think the world has, but when we begin to be self-serving, we're taking the religion of the world. Because our society today is not about service to God, it is about self-service. It is about doing what makes you happy. It is about doing the things pleasing to you, and as long as you're happy, as long as you're content, that is all that matters in life. That's what society tells us. We are just on June the 2nd. June is one of the longest months of the year. Not in terms of days. It's one of the longest months of the year because the world so pushes homosexuality and other things. They push that whole Pride Month and LGBTQ and whatever other initials they've now added to the end. And the answer that is given is, well, as long as that's what makes you happy. And we would stand back and say, no, you can't do that. The Scriptures forbid it. And absolutely it does. But if we're not careful, while we may not take it to that extent, maybe not to the extent of sins like homosexuality, we can take on the religion of the world that says, I'm going to do what's pleasing to me and makes me happy. And as long as I am happy, and as long as I feel like I'm getting something out of whatever I'm doing, then that's all that really matters. That's the religion of the world. And if we, like Ahab, find ourselves taking on the religion of society around us, taking on their practices and their beliefs, we, like Ahab, have sold ourselves to do evil. Number four, we've sold ourselves to do evil if we begin to blame others for our problems. When Ahab saw Elijah, he said, Is that you, O troubler of Israel? Elijah said, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have. In that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and followed the Baals. Ahab is the one who was the troubler of Israel. But he wanted to blame somebody else. And so he was going to blame Elijah. Number five. He did what he wanted instead of what God said. That can be closely connected to what we said a moment ago about uh, what we said a moment ago about religion of the world, because that's really what the religion of the world is, is do what you want instead of what you are told you have to do. But Ahab was somebody who, he was not content with what God told him. Uh, God gives him a command to, to destroy Ben-Hadad, and God says, I'll deliver him in your hands and destroy him, and Ahab decides not to do that. He decides to spare some of them because that's what he wanted to do. Number six, if we are selfish and discontent, we've sold ourselves to do evil. You remember the story of Naboth's vineyard in 1 Kings chapter 21? Where in 1 Kings chapter 21, we read about that vineyard and how here's, here's Ahab who wants the vineyard and Naboth says, no, you can't have it. And he goes and he pouts like a little kid. Because he wasn't content with what he had. He was selfish and wanted other, and, and, and he didn't want to share, but wanted what he wanted. And if he didn't get his way, he wasn't going to be pleased. If we find ourselves being selfish and discontent, we've sold ourselves to do evil. Finally, if we disregard those who proclaim the truth, we have sold ourselves do evil. In 1 Kings 22, Ahab dies. But before Ahab dies, there's a prophet by the name of Micahiah who 
comes and prophesies. And uh, before Micahiah gets there, Jehoshaphat wants to inquire of the Lord before going to battle for Ahab with Ahab. Jehoshaphat is a good king uh, in the southern kingdom of Judah, and I still am never will understand why he thought it was a good idea to be friends with Ahab. But he decided to be friends with Ahab. They gave their children married each other and caused some other problems in the southern kingdom of Judah later. But Jehoshaphat's going to go to battle with Ahab here, and he says, before we go, we need to inquire of God. And Ahab called in his yes-men. That is, they came in, he, he told them what he wanted, and they gave him the answer he wanted. Should we go to battle? Yeah, 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 you, you, you should go to battle. That's what he wanted, that's what they were going to tell him. And Jehoshaphat said, is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? And Ahab said in verse 8 of 1 Kings 22, there is still one man, Micahiah the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And that's exactly what he did. He prophesied the destruction, the death of Ahab. Ahab thought, well, I don't like him because he doesn't proclaim the truth. And today, we may reject somebody because what they tell us is the truth and what we need to hear, but it's not what we want to hear. I'm going to ask you a question again that we asked at the beginning. What would you sell yourself to? What would it take for you to sell out on your principles? I hope the answer is nothing. There's nothing that could be offered that would cause me to sell out on my principles. But unfortunately, sometimes we can do that. If we come to view sin as trivial, if we come to be influenced by the world, if we take on the religion of the world, if we blame others for our problems, if we do what we want instead of what God says, if we're selfish and discontent, and if we disregard those who proclaim the truth, we've sold ourselves to do evil. Here's the good news. Even if you sold yourself to do evil, you can make corrections tonight. If you're here and you've heard the Word of God and you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, do not repent of your sins, confess your faith in Him, be buried in the waters of baptism, rise in a walk in the newness of life, having your sins forgiven, having the hope of heaven when life on earth is over. Maybe you're here and you've done that, but you say, somewhere along the line, I've not been as faithful as I need to be. If it's a sin of a private nature, you can take it to the Lord privately in prayer. But if it's a sin of a public nature, you would desire the prayers of the congregation. We'll gladly pray with you and for you for God to hear you. No matter what your need is, if we get just you in any way, we're not going to right now. So together we stand.
up. Um, we're now coming to the part of the memorial part for those Christians that weren't able to partake of it as of yet today. We know that in Matthew chapter 26, he instituted this. As it says on the front of the table, do this in remembrance of me. The bread and the fruit of the vine represent his body and blood. And the life, his teachings, his death, his burial, his resurrection, and why he did it. We need to bear all that in mind. Because it was totally out of love and it was for us as mankind. Because without Christ's sacrifice there upon the cross, we wouldn't have any hope of an eternal life with him in heaven. Any further remarks? Brother Dan, would you give thanks for the gift? Merciful God, we come to you in prayer thanking you for all the blessings. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son Jesus who sacrificed his life there on the cross. Father, we know it wasn't the nails that held him to the cross, but it was his love for us, his love for you to keep your commandments, Heavenly Father, and make us it's possible for us to have forgiveness of our sins by offering his blood and his blood. See, Father, as these are about to take of this bread, which represents his body, we ask you to bless it and bless them as they take it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. concludes the Lord's Supper, and if you have not, as of yet, had a chance or opportunity to give the collection is in the back, so you can do it on your way out. brings our service to a close. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this day and worshiping together. Remember our next service is Wednesday at uh, 7 o'clock for Bible study. Just remember those that mentioned that we're sick. And is there any other announcements that need to be made? If not, let's stand. And Brother Sean Ray will direct us in another song and then Brother King Lancaster will have the final prayer. Number 652. 652.